My name is Sid Anand. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've worked in the Valley for many years, uh, at many of the companies listed above. Uh, I currently work at PayPal. I joined about 10 months ago uh, to work on various data infrastructure challenges. Um, I'm also a co-chair for many of the QCon conferences. Uh, one of them is this one. Um, I'm also a maintainer on Apache Airflow. Uh, and in my spare time, I spend time with my family. Uh, one of which is like a one-year-old girl and the other is like a five-year-old boy, but they both act exact same age. Um, so Apache Airflow, first of all, a show of hands. How many people have used it? Okay, how many people have heard of it? Okay, more, okay, good. Um, so what is it? In a nutshell, it's a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. Um, workflows are thing, you know, things that do things. Uh, and they're also known as DAGs, or directed acyclic graphs. Um, and the first way most people come uh, to know Airflow is through its UI. That's essentially the first interaction most people have. So I thought, why not just walk you through the UI a little bit? Um, so uh, this is the landing page for the Airflow web server. When you hit it, if you have Airflow running at your company, for example, um, there are multiple columns here. Um, the first column, uh, let's ignore this one. The first column is just the name of the DAG. Uh, and then next to it, there's a toggle switch, which basically tells you whether the DAG is enabled or disabled. So if you're doing some sort of maintenance uh, on some system, and let's say you're doing an ETL, you have some sort of ETL that's reading data from, let's say, MySQL and writing it into Redshift. And let's say you're doing some maintenance on uh, My MySQL, you might want to disable uh, that DAG. Uh, the next column over is sort of a schedule. And it supports multiple types of schedules. So it supports like cron scheduling, you can also specify, like, because this is written in Python, which I'll talk about a bit more. Um, it supports like Python date time uh, semantics, and it also has some inbuilt, like, built-in um, enums, like hourly, daily, monthly. Uh, the next column, of course, is the owner, and then this is sort of a slightly older UI, um, but uh, the, the, the stuff in trunk has uh, got a few more columns here. But this basically tells you that. Uh, this had three tasks, and all of them completed successfully in the last run of that DAG. This one just started, and there's one task in progress, so it's light green. Um, and then down here, this says that this DAG had a few tasks that successfully completed, but then it hit an issue, and then every, that's all the reds that are failed tasks. And then within that DAG, within this di directed acyclic graph, uh, the bottom of, like, downstream of that, those were never run. Those two orange uh, globes just tell you that the bottom part of your DAG never actually executed because upstream of it, uh, some tasks failed. Um, and finally, there's some sort of like quick links to hop around the UI. Let's say you pick one of these uh, DAGs and you click in on it. Um, you'll come to this view, which is the pictorial view of your graph uh, that you're executing. This is a graph of computation. Um, and so these are the tasks. That's a task, that's a task, that's a task. So these tasks are chained together in a dependency tree. Um, so this is the first one to run, after which if it's successful, this will run. If that's successful, it'll go down these two paths. Um, so how many of you have used something else, uh, like a DAG scheduler of any sort? Just to get a sense. A few of you? OK, cool. Um, not too many, though. Um, so this is sort of the pictorial view. And then another view is the code view. So um, this DAG is actually represented in simple Python code. Um, what differentiates this, uh, like Airflow, from, let's say, Uzi or Azkaban, which are also workflow schedulers, is that you have to deal with like XML definitions, or in the case of Azkaban, you actually have to zip uh, a directory of files, um, and that that directory actually mimics your the layout of your DAG. <coughs> It's very cumbersome if you start trying to cha make structural changes to your DAG to CD to multiple directories to, to change config and stuff. Um, Airflow says that uh, your DAG is just going to be code. And as a software engineer, you'll apply all the best practices of software engineering to this code. So you get all the benefits of like, good software hygiene by just being a good software engineer. You don't have to manage another like, DSL or, um, or like, you know, uh, XML or something. So, so this is exactly what the code looks like. Say that you've run your DAG multiple times now, uh, and you want to see historically how it's done. So this is called the tree view. And the tree view basically shows you um, a few things. So this is your DAG represented as a tree. Okay? Um, these round circles at the top 
are the status of a DAG run. So let's say your DAG were to run every day. Uh, over 30 days, you'd have 30 green circles if they were all successful. Um, and this light green one just tells you that that's the one in progress. And then all the squares are actually task statuses. So whereas the round circle up here is a DAG status, these are all task statuses. And they can either be, as you can see, pink, which means that they were skipped because they didn't meet a condition. So they were just conditional uh, tasks that only run maybe, uh, maybe every, at uh, 3, 3 a.m. every day. Uh, in addition to what your DAG normally does, it also takes a backup. So you know, that's why you would end up skipping a lot, like 23 other hours of the day. Um, and then uh, this is the current DAG that is being run on this edge. And you can sort of see uh, this, this green one is the one in progress. And downstream of it are two that will need to, need to run afterwards. Um, so this is sort of a tree view uh, of your DAG. And you can see like, over a course of days, this, I think this is 25 hours. These are hourly DAGs. It's got 25 runs. Um, how about executing, uh, how about looking at the actual performance of your DAG? So you can look at a specific DAG run, and you get a Gantt view. And the Gantt view shows you that, OK, for this specific DAG, um, it spent five minutes waiting for some data to land. It says waiting for collector ingest. Then it spent about 10 minutes doing a Spark job. This is an aggregate that data Spark job. And then it had to import that data into a database. And that's, it's called wait for MTQ here. But essentially, it spent two minutes. So the most expensive part of this DAG seems to be this Spark job, which makes a ton of sense. This is some sort of aggregate, uh, aggregating job. Now, how is it performing over time? So this will give you the time view. So where, whereas in this case, each task in the DAG, we're an, we're an item here. These are the tasks in a specific DAG. Um, we're taking each of those and making them a series. So they're now, this is the aggregate um, data Spark time series. And these are all the other ones. And these are all fast, so they, get, they take almost no time. This x-axis is the runtime of the DAG. Like, when was it scheduled to run? If it's running every hour, so every hour of the day, there'll be a dot here. The y-axis is the duration of that task. So um, this DAG is running over multiple uh, months, in fact. But um, this is how long it takes in terms of fractions of an hour. So what we found out was in January of this year, um, our Spark jobs are just getting slower and slower and slower and slower. And of course, these are the weekends, so things are kind of better. But it's just getting slower and slower and slower. And if we didn't have this sort of monitoring view built into Airflow, we wouldn't have noticed this. Our data scientists uh, optimized the Spark job. And then they brought their performance back down to you know, 0.3 hours, 18 minutes or something, um, instead of like over 30 minutes. And then they did another optimization back here to bring down the time. And of course, they added more like, features, and things got worse again. Um, but this is one thing that Airflow gives you. Why use it? Well, it's useful to automate things like ETL pipelines, machine learning pipelines. Um, also, you know, just simple cron jobs that run on one machine, especially if you're running like, in the cloud and that, that instance can go away. You sort of need uh, some reliable cron that's distributed that's going to run, uh, even if a machine crashes or something. And what should uh, you know, a workflow scheduler do for you? Right? What are the like, table stakes? So the table stakes are, uh, first of all, it should schedule a graph of dependencies. So if upstream dependencies succeed, then downstream should run. It should retry if things intermittently fail. Uh, so it should handle the task failures by retrying. It should uh, report and alert on any type of failure. So there should be something that comes bundled with it. But in all of our companies, we all use a different hodgepodge of like monitoring and alerting. So it should easily integrate with those. Um, it should give you a built-in performance over time, which we sort of saw. Um, it should enforce some sort of SLA alerting. Because if you're, if you're, in the, if you're the person in charge of uh, workflows, you probably care about correctness and timeliness, right? If uh, an hourly job is taking three hours to run, you're probably going to get paged. OK, so we're quickly running out of time. Um, so what, what does Airflow add on top of this? It adds the fact that it's configuration as code. Um, it's usability in terms of a stunning UI. Uh, it's got centralized configuration, resource pooling. And, and uh, it's very easy to extend because it's essentially a Python code base. All right, so I'm going to really run through this um, just to give you a sense of this. So this is an actual use case that is powered by the Airflow DAG you saw. Um, in the previous company I worked at, we were collecting um, email metadata uh, live from customers, customers being other enterprises. And that data would land in S3, in an S3 bucket. 
And every hour, uh, a Spark job would run to aggreg aggregate like some statistics on that message data. Um, and then we would post the aggregates back into a different S3 location. Um, and that would cause uh, notifications <coughs> to be sent over SNS and SQS. Um, and then we would launch a, a, a fleet of importer nodes uh, running in what's called an auto-scaling group to read all of this data and transfer it into a database in a structured format where uh, a UI could be used by, um, by, by like some sort of NOC person, uh, network operations center person, to actually analyze the results of all the email that they got. Um, all of this was being done by Airflow orchestration and was handled by uh, this same DAG that we just looked at. Um, so this is sort of the stuff you can do. We do a lot more than this, um, like model building, uh, model deployment. Everything can be done through Airflow primitives. Um, it's a pretty, uh, it's been around for about two and a half years. So it was created in Airbnb in 2015. Uh, and then Max launched at Hadoop Summit that same year. Uh, and then in 2016, uh, we got it into the incubator. And today it has 2,400 plus forks, 7,600 stars, uh, 430 contributors, 150 companies officially using it. And uh, we are at like 14 committers and maintainers right now, and we're always growing. Um, so that was about it. Thank you. If you have questions, you can come up.